Bibles to Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. The title of the message is this morning is, What Do These Stones Mean? What do these stones mean? And we're going to be reading from Joshua as they were about ready to go into the promised land. And it was a big day and their faith was being stretched and uh, they wanted to do it like Moses. Moses took the children of Israel, two and a half million people, through the Red Sea. And now the next generation is coming up and they're going to go through the Jordan at flood time. It means that the uh, river was extra deep and, and extra wide and they needed a sovereign miracle of God. And the priests went first. And the, the waters parted and was held back upstream and upriver. And they went through and um, they were to gather some stones and make a memorial. So that's what we're going to read here from Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. It says, And it came to pass, when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave, leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of the Jordan. God into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them, that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it crossed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for our nation. Thank you for uh, the birthday, celebrating, uh, remembering, uh, cherishing. Uh, Lord, thank you for harvest time and remembering the history and the hope of the future. And so, Lord, we pray that we'll all get some uh, riches from your word in making memorial stones in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was neat that uh, Brother Chuck was mentioning about Mount Helix. And uh, do you know that that was donated or dedicated to uh, Mary Carpenter Yaki, who was a prayer warrior. And in 1925, her, her daughter worked it out with, with uh, Mr. Fletcher, who was a landowner. And, and, and they bought that uh, Mount Helix, six acres up there, and developed that as a place to pray, as a place to gather for first fruits and and to commit the city to God. It's a beautiful place in the cross up there. And um, so I uh, felt led to go there on Friday, and it was nice. I, my energy level wasn't as high, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to come up there, and I'm just going to sit on the stones. I found a nice place up there, and, and where my back, and I could pray over the church. You can see the red roof from up there, and you can pray over, you know, harvest time in the community. And so I, I was praying, and uh, having a great time and resting in the Lord. And then all of a sudden I heard, just, you know, there's a gathering of, uh, uh, of women that are down below. If you know the place, there's a picnic table down there. But it just was neat. There was, there was like a joy was coming from that table, you know. And I'm up there and I'm thinking, I bet they're believers, you know. So anyways, we end up, I came down to uh, pick up something in my car and they were just leaving. And it turned into a, just a great fellowship and exhorting Jesus together. And they said, wow, we were just it was so neat to meet a preacher, and, and we were praising God. And then we, I said, hey, let's pray together. So we're all praying. There's All people are around. I said, let's say the Lord's Prayer together, and we're praying. And so the security guard 
got caught up in all of this, you know. And, uh, and he ends up um, asking Jesus into his heart. And he's the security guard up there, really neat man up there, you know. And, and he just got a good witness. And, and, and you know, but the living stones, you know, so it, uh, this is testimony. That, that's what they're talking about here is testimony. Now, here's a little bit of humor here that Mr. Smith asked his patient, uh, which do you want first, the good news or the bad news? And the patient replied, please give me the good news. And the doctor says, you're about to have a disease named after you. <laughs> so that wasn't good news, right? That's not good news. But you know something? In this world, there is no good news in being in the flesh. We don't want anything named after us in the flesh because everything, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God abides forever. We want a testimony in heaven. We want our testimony to be heard and recorded. And that's what God wants in our lives. And so we're celebrating 10 years. It's actually 10 years completed in one day because we were uh, you know, asked to be... Uh, the pastor here on on July the 3rd of 2011 and what a privilege that is to be a servant and to carry out what God has called us to do and and just looking out at your faces and seeing the beautiful work that God is doing the miracles and and how God wants to use you to reach other people like Damien up on the mountain up there got saved and invited him to church and God wants you to lead people to Christ and bring them to church and this is just we just begun amen to see what the Lord is going to do and also in our nation we're celebrating uh, 245 years as being uh, one nation under God. And I want to share with you just some highlights here that will tie into the message. Is that, you know, uh, when they signed the Declaration of Independence, it was on July 4th, 1776. And you say, hey, wait a minute. They still had to fight eight years of war. So they made a declaration of independence from England and declared, we are free. But yet they still had to fight. And they had to go out, and, and, and it was eight bloody years. And, and England was defeated, and America got its independence to, to serve God, and, and not government, to serve God. And that's the theme of America. We serve God and not government. And so whenever government gets too big, it's wrong. It's, it's un-American because we have personal responsibility. But here's something in the Star Spangled Banner that's also very interesting because England, we fought a second war. And a lot of times in our history classes, the second war really isn't covered that much because it kind of breezes by. But there was a lot of behind the, the scenes that were taking place is that in the second battle of, of 1812, when we fought England, is that it's, it's, you know how the Lord fights your battles? The battle belongs to the Lord. A lot of times we're praying, and how are you going to bring this to pass? But they had fought eight, eight years, and America was very weak at the time. They were having trouble with just basic government, currency, they, and, they, and, and now they're going to face England again. They weren't really ready for it or prepared. And this is what God had done behind the scenes. There's a man named Napoleon that you've all heard about, Napoleon Bonaparte. But God used Napoleon in his, in his zest for power. But he took on all these European powers, and they were diminishing their power. So God was using it to diminish their power. So England was, was losing men and power. Spain was losing men and power. Russia, the Habsburgs. It was just all of this because what was happening is, is when they came, Napoleon abdicated for, for about a half a year. He went to, and he said, you know what, I'm getting out of the war business. And so uh, what happened was, is he got tempted again. And so England was coming with more strength to come against America, but then all of a sudden Napoleon rallies all the men again, and they take on Europe again. That Europe thought he was like the Antichrist because it was non -star. So what happened is the Battle of Waterloo occurred. And that's when it was so bloody and it was so bad. 
and that later than when England came in the War, the War of 1812, it didn't have the power or the resolve to continue on, and they just pulled back to their, to their borders. But, and then guess what? America continued to grow. Also, other um, uh, countries like Argentina, um, Spain gave up um, Florida, and, and uh, Peru also gained their independence. Chile gained their independence because, see, the, so here's the thing. Whenever we're praying for our family, whenever we're praying for a community, whenever we're praying for a nation, God is working so deeply, so beyond, you know, what we can ask or think that that's why we need to learn how to trust God and walk with God and, and, and make these memorial stones because it says in Deuteronomy 6.12, Beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Why would God say this? Because they need to remember, just like you and I need to remember. When we were born again, when we asked Jesus into our heart, don't go back to folly. Don't go back to the world. It was, it was you know, back to the shame, back to the degradation. Back to, you know, the, the fears. But go forward in God. Don't go back. They crossed the river. And that's why the power of God is there to keep us from going back. And, and the, also, by going forward, you're a testimony to your children. To your children. Your children need to see stable, you know, examples of, of, of how to build their life. So he's saying... God is saying, and through Joshua and through their actions of building these memorial stones, is that these are an evidence to you of why you need to go forward, why you need to be responsible, why you need God's help. And he's there to help us. That's a beautiful thing. So don't go back to folly. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, don't go back to folly. All right. So here's some memorial stones. Now, it says in, in the New King James Version, it says it 267 times, it says the word remember. So turn to your neighbor and tell them, remember. Remember that. Remember that. Okay. And also, that's 267 times, but then it's not including the, not to forget. Not to forget. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of other words in there. So we need to remember these, these stones uh, that will help us uh, markers so that we can, you know, look and see, wow, I'm going forward. Now, they did 12 stones. We don't have time today to cover 12. So I'm just going to cover, a, a, you know, a few of them with the time that we have. But here's a good stone, is to remember all the commands of God, of what he's commanded us to do. Because this, listen to this, in Numbers 15, 39, it says, so you will remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lusts of your own hearts and eyes. In other words, if we do not set the word of God as our standard and our priority, we are all subject to going back and actually getting worse. Worse than we were before. You think, how could I get worse? Well, the Bible says, you, you know, the, those evil spirits, seven times worse will come on you. So in other words, don't play with these evil spirits, but put that memorial stone there that, that we're going to honor the word of God. Because what happens is, in, in, there's, in 2 Timothy 4.4, 4, it says, they will turn their ears away from truth to myths, to fantasies. And that's what's happening in our culture. The more that we turn away from the word of God, the more we just embrace fantasies. And fantasy gets into the area that's, you know, like um, C.S. Lewis wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, and, and that's an allegory, and that leads you to Christ. And if it's Christ-centered, there's, there's some good that can come out of that. But just imagination alone with no truth and no scripture and going nowhere, it leads into de de demonic activity and confusion. We need absolute fact and truth working in our lives, and that's what we have through the Word of God. It's just like right now. The more that people turn away from the Word of God, then they promote these theories like a flat earth. 
the flat earth theory. It's the silliest thing you've ever heard, but it's catching on in our culture. Even some of you might be thinking, well, maybe the earth is flat. I don't know. I was always told it was round. The Bible says it's round. The Bible says it's like a globe. It's like a ball. It's circular. You can, you can, you can look on a full moon with your, own, with your own eye, and you can see the curvature on the moon, right? But yet there's a theory out there, and it's catching on a lot with the millennials and X, Y, Z. They're like, yeah, yeah, the earth is flat. Well, Talk to the sea captains about that. How come we don't hear that, you know, Captain so-and-so fell off the earth the other day, you know, with a, because it's silly, it's stupid. But when we don't go to the word of God, it's the same thing with gender confusion, gender dysphoria. There's only two genders. It's male and female. He says it in Genesis. I made them male and female. I made them male and female. This gender dysphoria. I don't know what I am. Well, you need to just observe, all right? With humor, you need to observe, and that's who you are, right? And God will give you the strength to live up to, you know, all, all, all young, you know, people sometimes go through a little, you know, craziness, right? But that's why you need your parents there telling you, you're, you know, stand up like a man. Put those shoulders back. Remember, my mom used to, put your shoulders back, you know, and, right? That was good, and, you know, you know, act like a man, right? Uh, or, or act like a woman. You need to be more feminine. That was, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. They, don't we need, we need parents. We need, but where, where does our parents get the authority? From the word of God. But you can see if we don't stay in the word of God, then we, we start believing fables and, and fairy tales. And uh, Jeremiah talked about it. He said that in the last days before Judah was judged, the word of God was offensive to people. So Jeremiah was preaching the word and truth. You need to turn back to God. You need to get your heart right with God. God's going to judge the nation. God's going to judge the nation. Ah, get out of here, Jeremiah. We don't want to hear your words. We want to hear our own fantasies. That's what we want. We want our own thoughts. We're our, our own oracles. We, you know what I'm saying? And the nation was judged, right? And so that's why America... Our hope is in the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's why we're learning the word today. And, and you got your Bible and you got your Bible app and we can read it and know it. And uh, it purifies our life. It gives us hope. It gives us stability. Amen. So everybody say amen to the word. All right. So now we want to also remember your former life. As a, as, a, as a stone, as a, as a, remember where you and I came from. You see, lest we forget and, and, and we start, you know, uh, getting confused in our mind. Oh, see, that's what happened to the children of Israel. That's why he's saying to them, remember. Some of them were saying, we want to go back to Egypt. You want to go back to Egypt? You were a slave in Egypt. Your children were killed in front of your eyes. Your daughters were ravaged. You, you worked from sunup to sundown, and you had no wages. You were slaves, and you want to go back to slavery, right? And it's the same thing with Christians who backslide, and, and they, don't, they don't get enough of the word in them. So then they, they flirt with the world, and instead of going forward, they, they end up you know, going backwards. And Listen to this, though. Everyone. God is merciful. He just wants us to get it. He just wants us to enjoy an abundant life. And we're not anyone's judge in the sense that we, we are compassionate. But, but we have to also maintain ourselves lest we fall, right? So each person has to maintain and remember your former life. Amen. Do you want to go back to the hangovers and the DUIs and, you know, and sitting there in the jail cell. <laughs> this is a lot of fun in here. A lot of nice, interesting people in here. Yeah, no, no, we want to go forward. So the third uh, stone we're going to talk about is God's deliverance. How God delivered you. He delivers us, amen, from evil. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, since it's our 10-year anniversary, uh, it's so neat. Uh, I remember when, when Frank Meza... When he came into church and 
and his mom Hilda and and sister Deanna and they invited Frank to come and and Frank was you know he was in the world and he he uh, had some good a nice handsome long hair and and so anyways he got wonderfully saved and and his mom and 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 God and then he brought law into his life and they met in a casino Hallelujah, because <laughs> Frank had met there, and they, they met there, but God brought them together, and now Frank is saved, and, and he brings his girlfriend, you know, his new girlfriend to church, and, and then she ends up getting born again, and giving her heart to Christ, and they get water baptized, and they get married, and they get filled with the Holy Spirit. They're such a blessing, you know, so, so stable in Christ, and so have a beautiful marriage, you know. And so that's, that's God's, uh, you know, that's his plan of, of bringing people in and bringing deliverance and stability. And, um, and remember your first love. That's another stone. Remember your first love. In other words, um, we, we can't, if we lose, there's a place um, in Yellowstone. It's called Norris Geyser Basin. But you can go into an old geyser that was once full of steam and power just like old faithful and it would go off and fire and but the earth shifted and the tectonic shifted and this geyser went out so you can literally go down there and see the chambers and everything but that's like a, a christian that loses their first love there's no more steam there's no more power there's no more you know joy it's just it's going through a routine and uh, god doesn't want that to happen he wants you to keep the fire Keep the steam, keep the power, keep the love alive. And, and God is able to do that. And uh, uh, Dave Dotson has a neat testimony that, uh, you know, he was, he was working up north and um, he was working in Lompoc, Lompoc, uh, California, and, and as an inspector, and he's up there. And then COVID hits, and so he's, he's hours away from his wife and the church and and, and he's a younger believer, and he's up there, and, uh, and he just, uh, he want, you know, the church closed up there, and, he was, and then all of a sudden, God gave him this song. God gave him a song, and, and he's working on this song, Jesus, I Love You, and we sang it today, Jesus, I Love You. And so he's, he's like on fire. He, he, call, he calls us, uh, I got a song. I got a song, and, he, and, he, and the Lord just was just burning fire, you know, through that song. And so he, he asked my wife if, uh, if she could help him with the song and put it to music. And, and so she structured it and put it to music, and, and they, they got a patent on the song. And isn't that a beautiful song? Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you so. Amen. And see, but God, God used that song right to also to help Dave and now he's you know helping other people so um, as we're coming to a conclusion here remember the benefits bless the Lord O oh my soul and forget not all of his benefits who forgives all of our iniquities who heals all of our diseases keep you know cherishing Christ Jesus because there's benefits of peace and confidence and a good conscience and and hope and all these things that come by maintaining the benefits and then the final uh, that we're going to cover this morning because of time is always be ready for jesus return always be ready for jesus return and don't be like lot's wife okay so i'm going to read from luke 17 31 and 32 it says on that day no one who was on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down and get them likewise no one in the field should go back for anything remember lot's wife i tell you on that night two people will be in in one bed one will be taken and the other left two women will be grinding grain together one will be taken and the other left so this is a a, 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 a memorial stone that Jesus is coming. We don't know the day and the hour. It does say, he talks about summer, but then again, it could be the precursor, meaning that some of the events could begin the major events in the summer and lead for all we need to know is that the signs are pointing 
to the imminent return of the Lord. Do we want to be found in sin? Not Remember, when the rapture occurs, and uh, you, know, you can get the Left Behind series, um, uh, it's a beautiful series you can get on the movies, and it, but it's something that you need to research. If you don't understand it, that's okay. But there's an event, biblically, sound doctrine. Jesus is coming for his bride. He's coming for his church. And he's not coming for everybody who calls himself a Christian, right? I mean, Keith Green said in one of his songs, just because you, you know, eat a McDonald's hamburger doesn't make you a hamburger, right? <laughs> so... We can be Christian in name, but not in heart. And that's why don't take it personally. Just know this, that God wants you to know that you know I'm saved. I know it. And I, and I love Jesus. And I, I need Jesus. And I'm, I'm ready. He could come today. But see, it's motivation. How many of us here need some motivation, right? We all do. We all need motivation to keep us going, to do what's right. And this is heavenly motivation that Jesus is coming for his bride. And I do not want to be left behind in the tribulation. That's great motivation to me. I'll tell you, when you see these government controls and, and, you know, and vaccine passports and all this stuff that is totally intruding into your life, and you know, we know one young man that, you know, I mean, listen, the vaccine, listen, if you need to get it, then you do what your conscience says. But apart from the vaccine, there also is a globalist attempt to redefine the world and the world economy and, and, and shut down businesses and different things. And we just need to know that God is in charge over my life. He's in charge over my health, my economy, and I don't need to be afraid. I need to keep my eyes open, don't we? We do need to be discerning. We need to be watching. We need to be praying. Not afraid. Not afraid. But see how looking to that memorial stone, Jesus is coming. Do you think, do you think that's going to help us in our decisions for that day? Right? Jesus Christ could come today. I want to be ready. <laughs> I want to be ready. And guess what? We also then are ready to witness. And we're ready, you know, to give a, a, our testimony. We're also ready you know, to, to receive blessings from God. So it's a lifestyle that he wants in remembering. So these are memorial stones of remembrance. We covered them for, you know, our nation and for our church. Can we all stand up together and we're going to close in prayer. Um, maybe if you could close your eyes and just think about the message. But think about in your life, is there... Um, is, is there a, a desire that do you feel the Holy Spirit is calling you to dedicate your life or rededicate your life to Christ and, and just say, Lord, I'm all in and I want to dedicate myself to you. I, wanna, I, just, I, I want you to know that, that I need your love. I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. And so I want to dedicate myself to Christ alone. God, help me. If that's you, just raise your hand right now. That I want to dedicate myself to Christ, Christ alone. Amen. And, and just make that a, a, a memorial, amen, of dedication. And that's so beautiful. And why don't you just come forward right now, those that have raised your hand, and let's just dedicate ourselves in the house of God. Let's dedicate ourselves to, to doing God's will. We need his help. We need his mercy. We need wisdom. We need understanding. We need his protection. And he's just looking uh, to use, um, you know, that availability in our hearts. And so this is a beautiful thing of dedication to the Lord. So, Lord, you led us to, um, you know, dedicate ourselves up here at the altar. And those that have come, and we also in the congregation, Lord, we dedicate ourselves to putting you first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And Lord, we're asking now that you see our hearts, our need for you. I need you. We, we want to grow in grace and in knowledge and confidence in you, Lord, and be steadfast, Lord. So we pray that you strengthen, Lord, each one that's here at the altar, Lord God, of your mercy, God. Strengthen their life. Give them a heavenly vision, 
Lord, heavenly strength, heavenly rebar, Lord, from heaven to stand up, Lord, and to be accountable, Lord, to your loving nature, God. So bless them, bless the congregation, Lord, strengthen us all. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together, and uh, we'll say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now this is our tradition, is 2 Timothy 1.7. So this is a scripture that it's easy to memorize. Don't feel bad if you don't know it, but this is a good way to start. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1.7. So let's say it together. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Hey, I'm whole in Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And you're whole in Jesus. Amen. And beautiful, beautiful time. And we want you to know now that there's cake. There's a cake.